Good morning. And welcome to worship as we gather here to worship and to learn and to praise God and to fellowship together at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. A special welcome to those who are worshiping with us by watching our worship service on local cable access, those who are watching our service and worshiping with us through the internet feed as well. A few announcements, and there's quite a few in your bulletin that I invite you to look at as well, and I'm just going to touch on these, the details that are in your bulletin. Today, following worship, at the same time that we have Coffee Fellowship, there's a general meeting of the Good Shepherd Women of the ELCA. All women are invited, and it's downstairs in the parlor, back behind the kitchen, following worship. Grab some coffee and goodies and go back. And then tonight, there's a youth committee meeting at 5 o'clock. Tomorrow night, I'm going to gather with third graders and their parents in preparation for them receiving their first Holy Bible. I always look forward to that. And then this week, make note that the Wednesday supper menu is barbecued chicken and scalloped potatoes. Next Sunday, we are hosting a dessert bake-off. So I hope you plan on that. You're invited to bake your favorite dessert and then bring it down to the kitchen before worship just drop it off downstairs and then following worship everyone is invited to fellowship after worship and come down and sample all the wonderful tasty treats last year there were lots of them and and such a great variety and then you'll get the chance to vote on your favorite one and so plan now to be a part of that plan now to figure out what you want to bake what you want to put together for that and No need to register, just plan now to bake something and plan to come and sample them all as well. This week you should be receiving your new monthly newsletter in the mail, so please be sure to read that when it comes because it outlines a lot of the activities and happenings that we will be having in the church here in the coming weeks. And those are all the announcements that I have today. Our focus on worship as we continue reading through the Bible, We continue yet to be in Genesis, hearing now today the story of Joseph and his brothers, and it gives us a chance to focus and think about uh, forgiveness and, and our relationships within families and the natural instinct we might have to um, not give forgiveness, but this gift that God has given us in forgiveness. We're going to rise and sing our opening hymn in your red hymnal, 715, Christ Be Our Light.
join me then on the front of your bulletin as we confess our sins and then hear the wonderful news that God forgives our sins. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. God of grace and mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another. It is too easy for us to be jealous of the gifts and popularity of others. We are often tempted to lash out at those we dislike. We have not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. We struggle to love our enemies. In your great mercy, forgive us and use us for good. Amen. Our God is a God of great compassion and mercy, able to bring good out of even the greatest evil. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. We are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together then the prayer of the day is printed there in the bulletin. God of dreams and hopes, you use the challenges in Joseph's life to save the lives of others. You work in and through us to bring healing out of brokenness. Help us know that you are with us and capable of turning all evil to good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time I invite you to be seated and then I invite any kids to come up for a kids message. Hi guys, how you doing? Wondering first of all, I'm going to start with a question for you guys, then we'll ask these guys. Have any of you ever, yeah, the girls too, not just the guys. Thank you. <laughs> so the question I have for you is, uh, have any of you ever made a mistake? Have you made a mistake? One? One mistake? More than one mistake. Do you think they have as well? Do you think there's anybody out there? Just take a look at this crowd, the guys and gals. Do you think there's anybody out there who has ever not made a mistake? Not even your mom or dad? Nope. Okay. And you're right. We all make mistakes, don't we? We all do things to hurt other people, to hurt ourselves, to hurt God, right? But then God gives us a gift right because we are people who make mistakes and you know what that gift is called this is the sign language for it can you put your hand out do you know what this is forgiveness god takes our mistakes and actually in sign language you just wipe it three times like that can we all do that that's forgiveness god wipes it away i want to show you what that might be like but i need you to come over here you know what this place over here what do we do over here we do it on a table over there too. What do we do here in the water? You gotta come right up here because you wanna see this. Step right up. What is this for, this place? What do we do here? Baptize. We baptize people. And you know what happens in the water? You can touch the water. Kinda made it a little warm. Do you wanna touch it? In this water, together with the words, we're baptized, we're joined together with God, and when you're baptized, a cross was made on your forehead. When you're baptized, water and the words, God comes to you, joins you together with him, says, you are my beloved, you are a child of God. I love you and I give you gifts. And one of the gifts that comes to us is this. Do you remember what this is? Forgiveness, Forgiveness right? Wipes away the things that we do, the mistakes we make, the brokenness. Now, I sat and made a list before worship today. And it's some of the mistakes that I have made. And maybe they're mistakes you have made too. One mistake I made is sometimes I don't share the way that I should. But then I remember I'm a child of God through baptism, right? And in the waters of baptism, a wonderful thing happens. My mistake that I did not share, look what happens. You're going to want to see this, Bexley. So then my mistake 
comes together with God's promises in baptism. Okay? And then God does an amazing thing. Do you remember what God promises to do? Forgive us. Look what happens. And what happens to my mistake? God forgives us, right? And is it gone? It's gone. Okay, another mistake I made. Let's see if you've ever had this one. One of my mistakes was I did not obey my parents. Hmm? Does that sound familiar? Okay, ever? Riker says I'm not going to fess up to that one, okay? Did not obey my parents, but what happens? The gift from God in baptism. Yep. In, go ahead. And what happens? We're forgiven, right? And it is erased and wiped away and wiped clean. Okay, another one. Once I was, more than once, unkind to a friend, unkind to someone. So then again, what happens? In the waters of baptism, God says, you are forgiven. And where does it go? It's gone. It's disappeared, right? It's a gift. Yeah, it's gone in a dumpster. And then another one, once I did not, oh, many times, I have not listened well. That's a tough one. Okay, and then what happens? In the waters of baptism, God forgives us. Now, God gives us that gift so that we can forgive others. So let's do that again. God forgives us so that we can forgive others. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Help us forgive others. Help us forgive others. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Sunday school. Sunday school, Sunday school. Here's Miss Lana. She's going to take you to Sunday school. Are there any others that want to go with her to Sunday school?
Psalm chapter 105 recalls God's faithfulness to God's people throughout history. The section we read today remembers how God worked through Joseph. Psalm chapter 105, verses 1 through 5 and 16 through 24, will read responsively. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. He had sent a man ahead of him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. Until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord kept testing him. He made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. Here ends the psalm reading. A reading now from the book of Genesis, chapter 37. And to introduce it, I just want to say this before we read, and I'll stop in the middle as well. Last week, our story was about Abraham. And now we continue on with the story about Abraham's grandson, Jacob, also known, and here he's mentioned as Israel. Um, and Jacob had 12 sons. And unfortunately, Jacob did something that's kind of unthinkable in the word, world of parenting. Jacob had a favorite, not just that he kept quietly to himself, but he had a knowing favorite. And it was his youngest son, Joseph, who he favored and loved more than the other sons, which caused lots of strife then between the brothers. And it is written, Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of the other children because he was the son of his old age. And, Joseph, and Jacob made Joseph a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than the other brothers, they hated him, and they couldn't speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen, listen to my dream, that I had a dream. There I was, binding sheaves in the field. And suddenly my sheaf of wheat rose and stood upright, and your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed trying to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. Now his brothers went to the pasture, their father's flock near Shechem, and they said to one another, Go now and see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. And so they sent Joseph from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and the man said, They've gone away, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found their, them there at Dothan. And when the brothers saw Joseph coming from a distance, and before he came near, they conspired to kill Joseph. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let's kill him. Let's throw him into one of the pits. And then we can say that wild animals have devoured him. And we'll see what becomes of his dreams then. But when Reuben heard the plan, he delivered Joseph out of their hands, saying, let's not take his life. Reuben said, shed no blood. Let's just throw him into the pit here in the wilderness, but not lay hands on him. 
that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to the brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and they threw him into the pit. The pit was empty, no water in it. Then they sat down to eat and they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay hands on him, for he's our brother, our own flesh. And the other brothers agreed. And when some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph off, lift him, lifted him up out of that pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph back to Egypt. Then jumping ahead in the story, um, Joseph's father and brothers all ended up later, many years later, moving to Egypt. Joseph became the ruler there in Egypt. He started as a slave, became one of the rulers, and he ended up helping provide for his brothers and his father. But at the very end of the story then, when Jacob finally died, when the father died, the brothers worried that Joseph would seek revenge for all that they had done to him, throwing him in a pit and selling him to be a slave. And this is the end of the story then. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph bears a grudge against us for all we've done and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died, and this is a lie. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of your servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when he, they spoke to him. And his brothers, they also wept, and they fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And then each week we've been singing this song before the sermon. It's, it began in the silence. It's printed in your bulletin there. This week, singing a verse about Joseph. Grace to and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Once upon a time, three tough guys pulled up on their motorcycles outside of a truck stop and they walked into the restaurant. The only other people in the truck stop west restaurant were the waitress and a tiny little man with a funny-looking face. 
really odd looking guy. That tiny little guy was sitting there at the counter and he was quietly eating his meal, just keeping to himself when those three men walked in and they targeted that guy right away because of the odd way that he looked and right away they started bullying him. They grabbed his meal from him and they teased him and without saying a word, that guy stood up and he paid for his meal and he walked out of the truck stop. One of the bikers was so frustrated that they couldn't provoke a reaction out of him with their bullying. They couldn't get him to try to fight. And so that, tr that motorcycle guy bragged to the waitress, he isn't much of a man, is he? And the waitress said, I guess he's not much of a truck driver either because he just ran over three motorcycles that are out in the parking lot. <laughs> now that story goes with the saying that we have in our society. Don't get mad, get even. It sums up the philosophy that has really been embraced by lots of us when it comes to dealing with somebody who's done us wrong. But in contrast to the world's ways, God gives us a different option when we're wronged. In fact, it's a completely opposite way to react. Instead of getting even, God calls us as children of God to be kind, to be tender-hearted, and to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. But that's easier said than done. It's hard to do. But we are called to love God and to love others. And that's what the Bible story for today tells me. It's the life of Joseph and it's a life of choosing forgiveness rather than revenge. In the story for today, Joseph, the thing that's amazing when I read this story is we don't often realize that he was only 17 years old when all this happened. By the time his brothers got so fed up with the way that their father played favorites with him, the brothers plotted to kill him. They were sick and tired of it all. And I think it's hard. It's hard. I just only have two children, and it's hard to not play favorites among them at one time or another. Uh, but in this case, there were such a handful of children it just talks about the brothers, and I'm going to guess there are sisters among them as well. At least 12 children Jacob and Rachel had, and yet he so outrightly let everyone know that this youngest son was the favorite. And to shower the love upon him, he gave him that coat of many colors. That's such a part of the Joseph story as well. He never tried to hide the fact that Joseph was his favorite. Not only was Joseph the favorite, but he knew it, and he thought a lot of himself, and he had dreams, and he wouldn't keep them to himself, but he just almost rubbed their noses in it all the more and let them know that even one dream had the brothers bowing down and worshiping him. So it's no surprise then that the brothers got sick and tired of it and plotted to re some revenge. But instead of killing Joseph themselves, the brothers decided to throw him in a pit and then sell him into slavery. But then the beautiful part of this story is that God's hand was in it at all the while through. And after 13 years, Joseph didn't end up dead, but ended up being one of the rulers of Egypt. And he was appointed by Pharaoh to have a special task then, that when a famine came in the land, Pharaoh said, Joseph, your job is a leader will be to feed the people and save the country from this terrible famine. And when that famine came, it says then that Joseph's family, where they were at, it was horrible, and they knew the only place they could go to, for food was Egypt. They went there to Egypt to beg for food. And the story says, and I didn't read this part, it's in between all those chapters that are in the story, that Joseph spotted them first. He saw his brothers come into town to get some food for the family, and he hid away and watched the brothers because he wanted to see what was in their heart. Were they still these that plotted to kill, or had they changed in the 13 years since? 
And the story says that in watching them, Joseph realized that they had changed, they had repented from their ways, and they changed their murderous ways. And then finally, Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers. And that's not even told about here in this story yet. They had a tearful and happy reunion, and Jacob and the whole family moved then to Egypt, and Joseph saw to it that the family was cared for and fed well. And the story doesn't end there, though. We could say it ends happily ever there, but then we have these last verses that I read from chapter 50. It isn't happily ever after because there's usually a problem when people have treated one another that way. And the problem was the awful damage and ugly scars that brokenness can leave behind. Everything went well as long as Jacob was alive. But after Jacob the father died, the brothers got scared. They were filled with fear and they were filled with guilt and they wondered what kind of a grudge Joseph held against them all these years. And if once father was dead, he would finally pay them back for all the terrible things that he had done. And so out of fear, the brothers sat down and they wrote a fake letter to Joseph and signed his father's name on it and pleaded with him, don't seek revenge against your brothers. And they got down on their knees and they begged Joseph to be kind to them. And he was. Not vengeance, but forgiveness and love. And this story teaches us about forgiveness. And Joseph had every right and power to punish his brothers for the pain and suffering that they caused him. And he could have, sorted, uh, he could have resorted to revenge. But he forgave the brothers. He wept with them. And they finally fully had a reconciliation. Sometimes Joseph is even compared to God. In that God has the right and the power to punish us for all the things that we've done wrong. And we deserve punishment. But rather than punish us, God has freely forgiven us, generously forgiven us, and restored a relationship with us and blessed us. And this Bible story, I think, encourages us to love our enemies and forgive one another. A story. It was a few years ago that a woman named Marion Hodges went to Target, something we'd, we've all done probably. She was a mother of two. She went shopping at Target, and at the same time that she was getting out of her car and going into Target, some teenage boys thought it would be fun to climb up on the roof of Target and throw shopping carts over the edge of the store, and you can see where the story's going to go. One of the carts they tossed off the roof of the store hit Marion, who was age 47 at the time, hit her right on the head. And it put her into a coma, and she spent many weeks in the hospital fighting for her life. She suffered a brain injury. She lost the sight in one of her eyes. It was horrible. Afterwards, in the midst of her healing, she asked if she could meet with the boys who were caught. They were caught for their prank. The boys pled guilty, and they were serving juvenile sentences. And the boys, she realized, were 13 years old, the same age as one of her sons. And when she met with them, she said, you know, I want you guys to realize what I was doing there in the first place. She said, I wasn't there shopping for me or my own kids. I was there shopping because Halloween was coming, and I wanted to get some Halloween things for the kids in my neighborhood who weren't going to be able to get costumes and weren't going to be able to get candy to hand out. And she said, I find it important to let every child celebrate a holiday like that. And then she told those boys that her choice was not to seek revenge, but offer forgiveness. And she said, I would love you to do this with me. Will you continue to let me meet with you regularly? And will you let me try to make a positive difference in your lives? Her reasoning was this. She said, as the mother of a 13-year-old, I know that it's so easy to do foolish things, but I just hope that the next time they're tempted to do something foolish, that 
they will think of me and try to make a better choice. She said, I choose forgiveness rather than revenge. Another story. This time from Detroit, Michigan, a suburb right outside of Detroit, a man named Gary Weinstein visited jail to meet the man who killed Gary's wife and two children. Gary and the murderer, they realized, lived just one mile away from each other. They were both fathers. Their sons attended the same schools. That was until the man in jail, Tom Wellinger, was driving drunk and rammed his car into the car that was carrying Gary's wife and two kids. And Gary's family died that day. And sadly, what Gary found out is that Tom's family that very day were flying into town to try to have an intervention regarding Tom's alcoholism. And when Gary and Tom visited during that jailhouse visit, drunk driver Tom asked Gary if he could ever forgive him for killing his family. First, Gary asked Tom this, can you forgive yourself? He asked him. And then Gary started meeting regularly with Tom's children while their father served a 20-year sentence in prison. And Gary said, I decided I wanted to play a fatherly role to those children because that's where I can make a difference, he said. And he said, slowly but surely, I'm realizing I'm starting to be able to forgive this man for the pain he caused in my world. And then I'm going to ask you now to think back to that first story I started with. The one that got us to chuckle about the truck driver and the three motorcycle guys. I start with that story, but I want to bring it up at the end as well, because revenge is what comes so naturally for us. But this story of Joseph and the forgiveness that we're called to live out in our lives, that's what's unnatural for us. We naturally know how to stick up for ourselves and throw insults around and get even with people who treat us wrongly. No one has to teach us how to hate or how to get even. We seem to figure that out all by ourselves. But forgiveness is something else. Forgiveness is something that we can't understand until God shares it with us and gifts it to us and demonstrates it for us on the cross. And don't get me wrong, forgiveness is not easy and it's not something we can do like a light switch. It takes years and years and years, maybe a lifetime to accomplish. And it's not about accepting or excusing somebody else's terrible behavior. But it's about letting go of the pain that you may have between you and not letting their behavior destroy our hearts. It's about choosing to let go rather than seek revenge. Maybe life or people or family or enemies have treated you the same way that they treated Joseph. Maybe you've been sold down the river by people who thought that you could trust, you could trust people that you thought loved you. Maybe you don't see anything positive or helpful or hopeful on the horizon. And if so, maybe this story is for you today. To remind us that God is still at work in all of this, oftentimes behind the scenes unaware. Life can be rough. Life can be awful at times. Yet we have this hope and we have this promise that wherever we are, or whatever the world or our family or our bosses or our enemies may think they've done to bring us harm, that God is still planning some good for us. May we trust and hope in this unseen, hidden work of God to bring good in our lives, and to bring good through our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We're going to sing about Joseph now, so you don't need a hymnal for this. It's on the back cover of your bulletin. As we sing together this song, Joseph was his father's favorite. I invite you to rise and then join me as we confess our common faith and belief using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And the creed is printed on page 105 in the front part of the red hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet one another now with this peace which comes from God.
As you share your offering today, we give thanks for our choir. They have returned after taking a break for the summer. Your generous financial gifts help us buy choir music and provide for our music staff. In addition, the choir members are an example for us to show we give of our time and our talents as well. For all the gifts you give, we say thank you. Please rise now as we sing together 186 in your red hymnal. the many ways that God speaks to us and through us, we pray now for the church and the world, and we pray for all those who are in need. Gracious Lord God, out of tragedy, you worked miracles through Joseph, giving him vision, giving him opportunity to forgive and to reconcile and be freed from the burden of brokenness and hate. We pray today that you would give us the power and the courage to find healing when we have broken relationships. Give us the power to forgive. Give us the power to seek healing. And give us the vision and the opportunity, God, to see potential in everyone and to be instruments of peace and love and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you showed Joseph how to use resources wisely so that people could express generosity. 
at a time when others would be selfish. Teach us how to have that same generosity so that no one sleeps hungry tonight. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, look with kindness upon those in our area who have experienced the devastating effects of heavy rains and flooding. Give comfort to those who lost homes and belongings and crops. Give strength and restore order to those who are displaced. Give us relief from the rains and point us to the hope we have in you, God. Lord, in your mercy. Heal and God, you have healed hurting and injured bodies and suffering souls, and we place in your care all those in our lives who are facing hardship and disease. Today we pray for Velma Brandt, Eldo, Lester, Jan, Arnie, Leonard, Kurt, and all others whom we name now silently in our hearts. Work your miracles in us so that everyone who suffers may be made well. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Knowing that you hear our prayers, we lift these things up to you, God, praying them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing now our sending song. We're going to sing verse 1 of 763. coffee fellowship at the women meet as well downstairs go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god